Now, this lecture discusses uh, one of the most important uh, middle rent theory in uh, social epidemiology as well as medical sociology. That is the fundamental cause of disease theory, or sometimes called fundamental cause theory. So to get into uh, tenets of fundamental cause theory, let's talk about, first of all, causes of disease. So here we have disease, right? For example, cardiovascular disease, lung disease, or kidney disease. And uh, for such health conditions, disease, we can have proximal causes uh, that is um, immediate predictor or risk factors um, that are direct causes of uh, certain cow's conditions. Okay? For example, smoking, high cholesterol or bad cholesterol, right? Uh, physical activity, lack of physical activity, uh, obesity, hypertension, and stress. Uh, then uh, to its left, we have distal causes. Uh, distal causes. These are uh, what we sometimes call the fundamental causes uh, mediated through proximal causes leading to all kinds of health conditions. For example, SES, socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, gender, social relationship. So we have a list of proximal causes or sometimes called risk factors such as diet, cholesterol, hypertension, uh, lack of exercise, smoking. Um, and uh, mostly there are individual level controllable causes of disease. And that view resonates well with the Western uh, approach to uh, health and medicine or Western cultural values in general. And then we have distal basic fundamental causes such as gender, race, and socioeconomic status. They're not so easy to control, right? Uh, to some extent, well, we can say uh, one can move up or down along the social uh, strata, right? Um, for SES, but it's probably a little bit harder to change one's gender or race. So they're not that easily controllable, okay? And that's one major difference between distal, or sometimes called fundamental causes of disease, and a versus proximal uh, causes of disease or risk factors. In general and in essence, fundamental social causes involve flexible uh, resources that determine the extent to which people are able to avoid risks for morbidity and mortality. Okay? And there are four features or four components of this theory. Okay? First of all, fundamental causes, uh, here we can just a single fundamental cause can affect multiple disease outcomes, right? Okay? So fundamental causes affect multiple disease outcomes. And for example, here we have low SES, that's a single uh, indicator of class, social class, right? Low SES. And uh, it's gonna affect diabetes, cancer, or associated with diabetes, cancer, and heart disease, okay? Second component, key component of this theory is that fundamental causes affect multiple health outcomes through multiple risk factors. So, so what's needed in the middle are multiple. So fundamental causes lead to diseases through multiple risk factors. So for example, the fundamental, fundamental cause here is low SES and health condition is cardiovascular disease. In the middle, we can have poor diet, inactivity, and smoking, right? Uh, also, 
uh, fundamental causes of, of disease have this very interesting feature. It's called temporal reproducibility. And that is, uh, the association is uh, reproduced over time via a replacement of intervening mechanisms. Okay? So in the past, from low SES to diphtheria, measles, typhoid fever, via overcrowding and poor condition. Today, low SES is still one of the most uh, single in, uh, most important predictors of uh, poor health condition. But via, let's say, a different set of mediators, uh, mediating factors, right? risk factors, poor diet, inactivity, and smoking, and the health conditions that are associated with such uh, a fundamental cause, as well as risk factors are diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. And the last but not least feature is the utilization, excuse me, fundamental causes involve the utilization, deployment of resources, right? Or resources used to avoid risks or to minimize the consequences of disease uh, once it occurs, once it occurs. So from uh, SES, uh, it goes to diet, exercise, information, and relationship, all the resources we can deploy to prevent the occurrence of some uh, health conditions or delay onset of certain disease. Well, here we also have a couple of counterexamples. When individuals, people, regardless of uh, being rich or poor, cannot deploy their resources, okay? then uh, the fundamental cause or causes don't apply. For example, pancreatic cancer, uh, a health condition that does not have an effective treatment. In that circumstance, uh, no matter whether uh, the patient is Steve Jobs or average American who doesn't have any, let's say, access to healthcare, probably their uh, prognosis of disease going to be uh, roughly equivalent simply because even for Steve Jobs, he doesn't have access to uh, health enhancing resources for pancreatic cancer. Of course, uh, he's going to have better living conditions. He's going to have access to uh, expert views about pancreatic cancer. So that's going to help him a little bit. But there there is no effective treatment for this health condition. Uh, so the consequence is going to be roughly the same for Steve Jobs and, let's say, average Americans who you know either have access to or who don't have access to good health care. But let's have a fair comparison. Let's say for an average American who has access to quality health care, the health outcome is going to be roughly the uh, same. And that's the reason why you know, Steve Jobs uh, died young uh, around you know, uh, 30 years. Yeah. So for fundamental causes, we can have SES, race, ethnicity, and gender, social relationship, social network, et cetera. And And the resources uh, that are involved uh, in uh, enhance to exacerbate you know, certain health conditions would be money, you know, uh, which uh, represents uh, spending power for healthy food, the gym membership, and insurance. Also knowledge, right? What is good for one's health and make sound judgment. Power, that is control over one's life. Prestige, uh, which is associated with psychological well-being and control. Now, how about in, interpersonal resources? That is social support and social network. 